Hi, ChatGPT. Hi, Claude. Hi, Lama. If it were down to you, how would you strategically solve the hate problem in the UK? Addressing the issue of hate in the UK requires a multifaceted approach. Here are some strategic steps that could be taken. First, education is crucial. Implement comprehensive educational programs in schools that promote diversity, inclusion, and empathy from an early age. This would involve teaching about different cultures, religions, and lifestyles, highlighting the value of diversity. Second, community engagement is essential. Foster community programs that bring people from diverse backgrounds together. Promoting understanding and collaboration. This could include community events, intercultural dialogues, and joint projects that, that encourage mutual respect. Third, media and online regulation play a significant role. Work with social media companies and traditional media outlets to ensure responsible reporting and moderation of hate speech. Promote positive stories of diversity and inclusion, countering negative stereotypes and misinformation. Fourth, legislation and enforcement are necessary. Strengthen laws against hate crimes and ensure robust enforcement. Provide adequate training for law enforcement to handle hate crimes sensitively and effectively and ensure victims have access to support services. Lastly, support for victims is vital. Establish and fund services that support victims of hate, uh, providing them with legal assistance, counseling, and safe spaces to report incidents without fear. These combined efforts grounded in education, community engagement, media responsibility, strong legislation, and victim support could significantly mitigate the hate problem in the UK. Addressing the complex issue of hate in the United Kingdom requires a multifaceted and strategic approach that encompasses various aspects of society, government, and individual action. While completely eradicating hate may be an unrealistic goal, there are several key strategies that could significantly reduce its prevalence and impact. First and foremost, education plays a crucial role in combating hate. Implementing comprehensive anti-hate curricula in schools from an early age can help foster empathy, understanding, and respect for diversity. This education should not only focus on the historical context of discrimination and hate, but also provide students with the tools to critically analyze and challenge prejudiced beliefs. Additionally, promoting intercultural exchanges and experiences can help break down barriers and dispel stereotypes that often fuel hate. Secondly, the government must take a strong stance against hate through legislation and enforcement, strengthening hate crime laws, and ensuring their consistent application can serve as a deterrent send a clear message that hate will not be tolerated. This should be coupled with increased funding and support for law enforcement agencies to effectively investigate and prosecute hate crimes. Furthermore, establishing a national strategy to combat hate with clear goals and measurable outcomes can help coordinate efforts across different sectors and regions. Media literacy is another crucial component in addressing hate. In an age of widespread misinformation and online echo chambers, teaching people how to critically evaluate information sources and recognize hate speech is essential. This could involve partnerships between educational institutions, media organizations, and tech companies to develop and implement media literacy programs for all age groups. Community engagement and grassroots initiatives also play a vital role in combating hate. Encouraging and supporting local organizations that promote dialogue between different communities can help build understanding and empathy at a personal level. These initiatives could include interfaith dialogues, cultural festivals, and community service projects that bring diverse groups together for a common cause. The role of social media and technology companies cannot be overlooked in this strategy. These platforms must be held accountable for the spread of hate speech and misinformation on their platforms. Implementing more robust content moderation policies, improving algorithms to reduce the spread of hateful content, and increasing transparency in their practices are all necessary steps. Collaboration between tech companies, government agencies, uh, and civil society organizations can lead to more effective solutions in this arena. Economic factors also play a role in the proliferation of hate. Addressing economic inequality and providing opportunities for marginalized communities can help reduce the frustration and resentment that often fuel hate. This could involve targeted economic development programs, job training initiatives, and policies aimed at reducing wealth disparities. The issue of hate in the UK is a complex problem that requires a comprehensive approach. To tackle this, 
a strategic framework incorporating short-term and long-term solutions is necessary. In the short term, establishing a hate crime task force would enable a rapid response to hate incidents. This task force would bring together law enforcement agencies, community organizations, and experts to share intelligence and best practices. Additionally, increasing funding for community organizations, such as the Community Security Trust and Stonewall, would support victims of hate crimes and promote community cohesion. Improving police training and response is also crucial. Police officers should receive comprehensive training on hate crimes, including unbiased policing and cultural sensitivity. Furthermore, social media platforms and online companies must take responsibility for removing hate speech and promoting online safety. In the long term, education and awareness raising programs can promote empathy and understanding. Addressing socioeconomic inequalities, such as poverty and unemployment, can also create an environment where hate is less likely to thrive. Community cohesion initiatives can bring people together and promote mutual understanding. Challenging hate narratives is also essential. Counter narratives, fact checking, and critical thinking programs can help to debunk stereotypes and myths. Strengthening hate crime laws and introducing new legislation to tackle online hate speech can also help to prevent hate crimes. Empowering marginalized communities to lead initiatives and develop solutions is vital. Amplifying the voices and experiences of victims of hate crimes can also inform policymaking and decision-making processes. Building alliances across different backgrounds, faiths, and identities can promote solidarity and unity. In conclusion, addressing the hate problem in the UK requires a comprehensive approach that incorporates short-term and long-term solutions. By working together, we can create a more inclusive, respectful, and hate-free society for all.